Alrighty then, so uh, this is going to be, sadly, the last video. Um, as far as the orchestration goes, I might do a little video talking about the sampling, but it may be a little while before I get to um, sample this entire piece. So I'll upload the SoundCloud demo, you know, I mean the SoundCloud demo, the, the uh, Note Performer demo on SoundCloud in the meantime. But anyway, yeah, so I, uh, as stated in the previous video, I developed, well, I just did a little bit of material that sort of gives us relief from our previous material. Um, so I'll go ahead and play to you, um, uh, this particular, so well, I'll just play you everything, actually, from, uh, the previous phrase. Let's see right here. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> I thought the ending, I, I don't know, I tried out my previous idea, but it just seemed a little superficial and like trying too hard. Um, so I think this particular ending, uh, you can tell me what you think in the comments, but I think it's just right because it gives just enough, you know, push and sort of hold out until the end that it seems satisfying, but not so much that it feels like annoying or boring or, boring or redundant or whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, this section, you know, um, oh my gosh, I can't ever hum. Let's see what is um, the exact same that it was at the beginning. <coughs> Excuse me, um, but it's an F sharp minor now. So I'll show you how we got there harmonically. So it's literally just a half step below from what we did the first time. So that's why I basically copied and pasted everything over to give them a you know, sense of relief. Like, oh, we've returned to our introduction because I, I always like making introductions of the ending. So it's the, literally the exact same orchestration. The only thing that was changed was the ending was extended. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do how I did that as well as this in between section. So firstly, um, uh, uh, we are going from F minor, I just might as well tell you harmonically, uh, going from F minor to E major, which is a, a nice uh, thing that I like to do, F minor to like E major Lydian. So because this, uh, let me see if I can get a good, you can hear that, this uh, A flat, which is also a G sharp obviously, serves as the third, the minor third of F minor, as well as the um, uh, major third of E major, so I always like that, you know. I've always liked that, you know, going from that, that particular chord progression, um, or the, just that type of modulation, I, I, li I like it, because it sounds like, uh, a new, it's like a new perspective on things, if that makes any sense, at least that's what it sounds like to me, emotionally. So, uh, yeah, so we have a little melody here, which starts off with the flute and then finishes with the oboe, so it goes like this. And the answer. All right, uh, the, the chord progression um, is basically just E major, and then it goes to D major, to F sharp minor, but um, I'll actually, you know what I should do, oh this might be helpful to people, when I, upload, when I finally upload the final PDF, I'll put a harmonic analysis of the entire piece um, so you can see what's going on harmonically, that'd probably be a better thing to do, because this is really, I want to focus on the orchestration here rather than the composition. Um, we'll get to that in later videos, but anyway, yeah, so you just have that simple little melody um, going on and the the flute It's it's fairly it's a nice register of the flute. But it's not too low, but it's not too high um, It's a nice breathy airy register where it's gonna sound very melodious and and, and very nice um, And the oboe is fairly high up, so it's not, it's you know not gonna be super nasal or ducky or loud So they're just nice solo instruments. I have them at a piano and then I have the clarinets dovetailing into each other with this sort of rolling bubbly thing Which I, I always like doing this type of thing with clarinets And 
And I've used an idea similar to this before in uh, the piece Over the Horizons. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to in the description. Um, so it's just a nice sort of rolling sound starting up with uh, you know the major ninth going down to the major seventh so it's like the two ends of the pole are, are jazz um, extensions of the chord so it has a sort of nice sound to it so those going together sound like this all right and then we have a pizzicato bass um, what, you know, I've talked about pizza got a bass, you know, working well under lighter stuff above. Alright, gets a little bit louder later. But, um, uh, so yeah, so that, combined with what we have so far, gives a nice simple texture that doesn't sound too empty, but it also sounds very clear compared to the previous, you know, muddiness. It's just very open. It's like a breath of fresh air. All right, and for the, um, when the oboe comes in, uh, the violas add a little bit of the harmony to thicken it up. With a, with actually a, it's it's a fairly nice counterline, you know it's simple but it has an emotional contour. And then the strings, vibraphone and uh, harp. So I should say the upper strings, the first violins, um, lead up with this secondary melody, which is a uh, answer. Which gets answered by the horn later, but just to talk about this particular section that we have now. So, which feels like almost the uh, the whole you know one two three method as Leonard Bernstein puts it. You know, you have the question over here, and then you have a second question. You know, one two, and then it sort of takes off in a flight of fury. You know, it just has a nice structure to it. You know, it, it feels like it's a natural continuation, sort of commentating on the melody, if that makes um, if that makes sense. So yeah, um, are basically just adding a little bit of part writing harmony in with the viol violins too and the violas. Right, combined with the pizzicato bass continuing as well as the melody. No performance has being weird lately. It's actually been it's been playing the second violins really really loudly, and I have no idea. I checked the mixer fader, and it's kind of random. But just to let you know, if the, if the second violins seem way too loud, then that's no performer. I don't know why it's doing it. It's a little bug, but oh well, it'll sound good in the final sampling. Sorry about that. I had to let the dog out. Um, so the piano continues with this rolling thing. You'll notice that I'm very consistent with my pieces. I don't like. Uh, I have a sort of policy like you know obviously you shouldn't be cliche or or it's you know have certain you shouldn't you shouldn't pigeonhole yourself into using these types of things for every piece you do but within the piece you should be consistent with yourself with your ideas because it makes everything sound cohesive so we're using a similar you know piano rolly type thing that we used earlier <laughs> So, um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have the harp, harp um, vibraphone, and I really like the sound that the vibraphone has. It has a nice, um, a nice belly woodenness. I can't explain it. It's just, I love the vibraphone. It's so peaceful and relaxing. It's, it's great. Um, yeah, so that's the entire texture. So literally vibraphone, harp, upper violins, strings on part writing um, for this first section of the melody. Um, and then for the, uh, I'll just go ahead and play that just to remind you. Alright, and when it goes into this later part, we have this horn line. Alright, so I'll just play the horn melody by itself. It's pretty high up, but it's mezzo forte, and, you know, they can, they can hit it. So, and then it um, goes um, 
to a, um, let's see, what would that be, D flat? Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, we, we, you'd have to call it C sharp since it's leading into F sharp minor, but a C sharp suspended. Um, and um, um, C uh, sharp dominant 7, which leads very well into the next section, which remember is in F sharp minor. Bum, bum. You know, that type of thing. Um, like we've been doing before, which leads into the ending. Uh, so yeah, so we just have the horns and then uh, the sorry the upper horns and then we have the other four horns because we have two on melody and then two on uh, uh, we have four on two part writing two horns per part so I'll just play these simple chords same rhythm. So all together, it's a nice three-part horn texture. Six horns, three parts. All right. Then the oboe doubles the horn uh, melody. And it goes up an octave later. You know, the same technique that we've been talking about, so. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, it. We still have the pizzicato bass, uh, you know, simplified a little bit. Again, trying to make the contour nice. All right, and then the arpeggios, which were originally on the piano, are now on the violas. So they're just bowing up and down like this. Um, again, you know, leading up to their next part, uh, like we normally do with our voice leading. And then uh, the uh, harps and piano are doubling each other in the low register. The harp actually sounds quite nice in this low register, especially when it's tuned to flats, which is not here, so it's kind of irrelevant me saying that. But because um, uh, when you tune uh, the harp pedals um, down so that they're more open, the string is actually looser and resonates uh, better. But anyway, random little thing there. Um, so yeah, so then we have this uh, yeah harp and piano separate thing going on the other direction. So I'll just play what that sounds like, just with the viola. So they're going in contrary motion with each other. So it's quite nice. I, I've always liked the sound of that. So yeah, all that underneath the horn, and the only other really thing that we have going is uh, these flutes adding this little ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba. But they're they're in not ugh, they're not in super high they're not in a super high register, so um, they're not going to be too annoying. They're not going to overshadow the melody. They're just a subtle little background thing. Right, and then it goes to the bum bum bum, and when we get to this, um, uh, uh, we need a bum bum bum. Since the melody is sort of really, you know, really simple, bum bum, just whole notes. I added a little trumpet counterline, which leads up to its next part. Bum 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 bum. Pretty simple thing, and then we have the trombones and chords. Oh, by the way, another thing I wanted to point out is that I'm I'm not being well, I am kind of am being lazy, but the reason I'm just you know writing everything out really quickly to get it out of my head. So like things like this, for example, three trombones on one stave. Yes, this should be extrapolated on all three individual staves. But after this video is done, because this is the last video. I'm going to go through and edit the score. I'm going to clean everything up, make sure all the dynamics are correct. Um, fix engraving, spacing, all that. Um, make sure everything is extrapolated and clean. Because, um, you know, when I upload it to Dropbox for you, uh, for your viewing pleasure, I want it to be as professional as possible. So don't, don't, don't worry about that. I just haven't gotten to that point yet. Because um, <clears throat> it's easy to, like, you know, kill inspiration when you focus too much on that, on the... Uh, the tiny little, you know, aesthetic details that you can just worry about later, in my opinion at least. So yeah, and then we have this, remember this, um, with the violins are doubled with the upper violins, the, or sorry, that were on the violas. I can't speak today. Gosh, kill me. Ah. That were on the violas, we doubled them on the first violins um, very quietly, and then they come in to build up, you know, tension later. All right, so yeah, all of that sounds like this, leading into the next section. All right, and 
you know how that you know this section was orchestrated because like I said it's exactly the same before it's just literally in a new key a half step down um, so yep the only thing I really need to talk about now is the ending so all of this is the same right up until this moment where you know boom bum ba 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 bum where I, I used augmentation which is basically just taking the melody and slowing it down at half speed to give it a sense of like finality like boom bum a sense of conclusion triumphance you know boom bum 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 all right so uh, really this is a really simple thing so we just have um, you know triple. Um, uh, strings like we normally have triple octave strings and then we have winds on the melody they have to adjust for range so the upper instruments have to go bum boom or bum uh, rather than going up because they can't make it up to the high D so alright so that first note is really <laughs> the piccolo that's really loud but yeah so that's what that sounds like or actually I didn't even play the whole thing good as me Right? And then we just have these huge bass notes. Um, I used uh, some low fifths. Um, I like doing that. Let me, uh, like, for example, if you have a voicing like this, it sounds really nice, but if you add a fifth down here, like this F sharp, which is the fifth of the chord, B, ma B minor, B major, or B chord, it adds, a, it adds really thick overtones because, um, because you you actually are hearing this ninth or add to extension in here because the f the second overtone of the fifth is the ninth if that makes sense so it has a very nice warm sort of delicious uh, sound down there so I'll go ahead and play that you know this is the bass trombone the the tuba um, uh, the bassoon the contra bassoon and the cello and contrabass. It just has a really thick sound. That's very nice. Um, so a little bit of a fanfare in the snare, but you know, bum 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 and you know, boom bum 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 boom bum bum. That last boom bum bum. I really wanted to be accented, so I um accented it with the timpani, boom bum boom boom, as well as the bass drum and the snare drum. So um yeah, all of that together sounds like this. So. That sounds like this. All right, and then with the other brass, we fill in the harmony. So the uh, um, lower trombones and uh, the horns have a sort of ET style, you know, that I like using. I use it in Guanaman a lot. Um, I tried to refrain from it, but it was—it's just too perfect for this, you know. Bum bum ba ba bum bum ba ba bum. It's used a lot for trailer music, but it really was first pioneered in ET, with you know, like the bum bum ba ba bum bum ba ba bum bum stuff like that. It goes like this. All right. So, um, and then it uh, it's, uh, this there. Uh, oh my gosh! I, can't, I swear I cannot speak to that. Kill me, please. Um. So then it has a typical, there are lots of different types of, in my book, in sort of my internal head, uh, different types of endings that you can do, different techniques, you know, sometimes you can extend something out um, a lot, sometimes you can have these big hits, bum, 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 but one of my favorites that John Williams uses a lot, where you have this, you think it's going to end, you boom, bum, 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 but instead it just drops out and goes down to this low chord, bum, Right, so um, he used it in Superman and Jurassic Park and several, so it's a really nice sound. So yeah, so it just goes to these really big low hits, and then there's a um, uh, uh, add to or suspended to, which resolves um, to the third, like this. That's too high. Oh my goodness. You know, which is a nice uh, sound. Um, he also used it in the Olympics. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, I could go into the details, you know, talking about, like, voicing, and, but that, I really don't want to, you know, that's, that, that's, I should, I, I'm probably going to have other videos specifically talking about part writing and voicing and the overtone series and, and stuff like that. But, of course, yeah, and then we have this huge um, timpani fanfare, you know, the usual. Um, 
bum, 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 and then a suspended symbol leading up to the ending. But yeah, it's it's really quite quite uh, simple. I'll play just the strings by themselves. And then the uh, brass, just by itself. And then the winds, just by themselves. And that's the only thing, there is a wind run at the end, leading up to the ending. Which goes like this. Alright, so, and I like using the harmonic minor, or not harmonic minor, but I, actually, I don't know if there's a specific term for it, but it's just a major scale, um, or, uh, I'll put it this way, it's, uh, the sixth and seventh degrees of the scale are lower, just like they are in minor, so really, the only difference between this and the minor scale is the third is ra uh, raised, it goes like, oh, let me go up an octave here. You know, doom. So whenever I have like endings, because it sound it has a sort of like classic Hollywood tragic lum bum bum boom. So I, I think it sounds better than just use a normal major scale. It sounds more final, if that makes any sense, um, uh, for this type of thing. So they yeah, add some. So I decided to end the winds on the fifth boom because if they ended at the tonic. Um, it'd be too low and it wouldn't be able to be heard by the upper winds and if um, if they can't go it's too high an octave higher so boom so I ended the winds on the fifth of the chord so yeah that's about it all right nice climactic ending so yeah um, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about this. There's a trumpet fanfare in there, which is going to punch out a lot more with the sentence samples, but I forgot to tell you about this. Nice little trumpet fanfare. Right. So, um, yeah. So, and that's not great too, because Cinebrass Pro has this um, solo trumpet sound that is just this has so much quivery and it's so buzzy and delicious that it's perfect for moments like this so yeah so i hope you look forward to the final sample version i look forward to it as well um hope you got something out of that so sorry i'm a little <clears throat> a little bit out of it today not going i didn't get much sleep last night but oh well writing music into the wee hours of the morning as usual practice makes perfect but anyway, yeah, so I hope you got something out of this video series. Thank you for the feedback that you've been giving me um, so far. Um, I promise for the next series I will definitely get some better um, uh, camera equipment. I tried uh, using a screen capture software, but it makes Sibelius so slow that it's almost impossible to do tutorials, so that's why I'm using my camera. But I'll figure out I'll figure out some solution. If this becomes popular enough, then it may be you know, uh, worth me investing in some uh, better technology for recording purposes. So anyway, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of that. Um, I can't wait to hear what the final piece sounds like. Um, I'll go ahead and play, you know, you the entire piece from beginning to end. And uh, I will finish up editing the score and upload that to Dropbox so you can look at it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about anything, like if, about any of the things that I've said or some detail on the score that I didn't mention or some range thing or something that you think could be improved or, I mean, anything. Feel free to comment on that. So, yep. Um, I will see you next time. Adios.